Hello, my name is David Peggy and I work here in the Scientific Department at the National Gallery, London. I'm an analytical chemist and investigate the materials used in these remarkable paintings around us. I investigate materials such as the varnishes, the paint binders and some of the pigments. My name is Gabriella McCarr and I also work here at the National Gallery in London in the Scientific Department. I examine the layer structure of paintings and I also identify and analyse pigments. This is a 15th century German portrait of Alexander Murnau and he's identified by the letter that he's holding. We don't actually know the artist that painted this picture over 500 years ago and that's why he's been named the master of the Murnau portrait. When the painting was first acquired by the gallery in the early 1990s, it looked very different to how it looks now. The background was painted blue and the tall hat was much smaller and fitted closer to the man's head. But how did we know that this painting had once looked very different? And why were we so confident that it wasn't simply the artist changing his mind about the colour of the background at a later stage? The answer lies in the careful examination of the painting and the chemical investigation of the materials which along with art historical research enabled the conservator to carefully transform this painting to its present state. The preparation of a tiny cross-section showed that the surface blue paint was over a layer of varnish. Investigation of the pigment identified it as Prussian blue, which was only invented in the early 18th century, around 300 years after the portrait was painted. So, if we know that the pigment is not correct, can we tell anything about the paint binder? Paint is made up of two basic constituents, the pigment, the colouring component, and the binder. Different materials can be used as paint binders, for example, glue, oils, and egg. The most widely used oil for painting was linseed oil, but later on the oil extracted from poppy seeds was also used by artists. We can distinguish these oils from one another using gas chromatography, mass spectrometry. This can separate the constituent parts of our samples, one from the blue paint layer and one from the original brown paint layer, and we can compare the traces produced and see if they are different. When the sample containing the original brown paint was analysed, the proportion of these two peaks are as expected for linseed oil. However, when the sample from the blue paint layer was analysed, it produced a very similar trace to this lower one indicating that it had been bound in poppy seed oil. It would be very unusual to find poppy seed oil used in a 15th century German painting. So, the identification of the binder as poppy seed oil and the pigment as Prussian blue confirms that this layer was added much later. But scientific analysis is not only used to alert us when something is wrong. It can also give us an insight into the original materials. Although from a distance the hat looks black, a photograph taken down the microscope shows that it actually contains quite a lot of red. And when we take a look at a cross-section from this area, we can see that this red is mixed with a blue pigment. When the painting was first made, it would have been a deep, rich purple colour. Unlike the blue mineral pigment, the colouring components of red lakes were extracted from organic materials, such as the roots of the madder plant, or even from insects. But can we tell what source was used for this red pigment? I can use liquid chromatography to analyse a sample of the original paint used for the purple coloured hat. Like gas chromatography, this is another separation technique for the organic components from complex mixtures. We can see that I have two large peaks here and these tell me that the red dye stuff was obtained from an insect called Kermes. The dye from this insect was highly prized and very expensive and was obtained from the whole body of the adult female when she was full of unlaid eggs. But Kermes was not the only red dye source used in our sample. A tiny amount of madder was also found, and I can tell that because of these peaks here. Dye from the madder root was cheaper than from Kermes, and the colour obtained was a more orangey red. So, liquid chromatography has provided us with information on the source of an original organic-based pigment. And with gas chromatography, we were able to show that the blue overpaint on the Mornau portrait was bound with poppy seed oil. So having discovered that the blue background had actually been painted at a much later stage, it was decided that the colour and composition of the original should be restored. Conservators here at the National Gallery were able to carefully remove the blue paint, revealing the original brown background and a taller hat. 
But the question still remains as to why someone in the 18th century changed the colour of the background and the shape of the hat. The answer to this lies in another room in the gallery. Hans Holbein the Younger is a very famous artist who was painting in the early 16th century. He painted some of the most famous kings and queens, including Henry VIII. This painting of Christina of Denmark by Holbein clearly shows his use of a blue background. The difference between Holbein's background on this painting and the blue background on the Mourner portrait is that this painting uses the historic pigment azurite. In the 18th century, when the Mornau portrait was radically altered, Holbein would have been a very popular painter amongst art collectors. It's therefore believed that the 15th century portrait was changed to look more like a portrait by Holbein. This would have made it a far more valuable work of art. I enjoy using my chemistry knowledge to investigate the materials of the paintings as it supports conservation treatments and enhances our understanding of the collection. It's really great to work in such an interdisciplinary job where I can use my knowledge of chemistry and scientific techniques together with my training in history of art and paintings conservation.